Hi, I'm Captain David DeMarco of the Belmont Fire Department. Welcome to another episode of Hot Topics with the Belmont Fire Department. Today I'll be talking about summer safety tips, but first, here's Chief DeStefano and Firefighter Chikurjian, and they're gonna introduce the Stop the Bleed program. Chief? Thank you, Captain. Did you know that the number one cause of preventable death after an injury is bleeding? The Belmont Fire Department would like to train you to stop the bleed. The American College of Surgeons Committee on Trauma administers the Stop the Bleed program. This effort was initiated by a working group of federal agencies with the goal to build national resilience to better prepare the public to save lives with basic actions to stop life-threatening bleeding that can occur as a result of automobile accidents, workplace accidents, or natural or man-made disasters. This program instructs virtually anyone with quick techniques using simple devices to control traumatic bleeding and save lives. As part of our emphasis on community outreach, the Belmont Fire Department would like to partner with community groups, organizations, and all our residents to learn to save a life. I'd like to introduce firefighter paramedic Matt Shakurzian to tell you a little more about our program. My name is Matt Shakurzian. I'm a firefighter paramedic at the Belmont Fire Department, and I've been here for three years. I've also been a Stop the Bleed instructor for many more. The Stop the Bleed program is designed to teach people of any age with little to no medical training on how to identify and stop life-threatening bleeding. We'll start with teaching you how to use a commercial device, such as a combat application tourniquet, also called the CAT tourniquet. These tourniquets are used by police and fire departments around the country, as well as by the US military. These devices are commonly found in schools, public buildings, and at venues. Another thing that we'll teach you in the class is how to appropriately and effectively use improvised tourniquets using devices that can be found around you, such as a stick or your t-shirt. In the class, we'll talk about some misconceptions about tourniquets, such as using a belt is actually not an effective or a safe method to control bleeding and can actually increase the amount of bleeding that someone's experiencing. Additionally, we'll show you how to use pressure dressings, also known as a trauma dressing, how to control it with appropriate pressure to control that bleeding. These are skills that you can use anywhere, such as your home, at work, or during recreational activities such as hiking. If you're interested in learning these life-saving skills, contact the Belmont Fire Department at fireadmin at belmont-ma.gov. Because never forget, you could be the first responder. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Firefighter Chikurjian. Now let's talk about summer safety. Let's start out with fire pits. Belmont is one of 22 communities in Massachusetts where open burning is not allowed. This is due to its dense population and its close proximity of homes and buildings. The Department of Environmental Protection and the Belmont Fire Department limit open burning for safety reasons in public health. Open burning does not apply to outdoor cooking appliances, which are defined as gas-powered grills, liquid propane, charcoal grills, or electric grills. Outdoor fire pits, chimneys, other fireplaces, and other appliances designed with the primary purpose of heating are not allowed because they may present a hazard in this densely populated community. The primary purpose of these items is not cooking, therefore they're not allowed in Belmont. Now let's talk about mulch fires. Regulations prohibit the new application of mulch within 18 inches of combustible exteriors of buildings, such as wood or vinyl, but not brick or concrete. Mulch pile size is limited because large piles can spontaneously combust from the heat that they generate. They must be 30 feet between each mulch pile. The distance prevents fires from easily spreading to one, another, or to a building. Permits are required from the fire department whenever more than 300 cubic yards of mulch is produced or stored. 
Now let's talk about grilling safety. Everyone loves a cookout in the summertime. Here's what you need to know about grilling safety, no matter what kind of grill that you may use. It sounds funny, but always grill outdoors. Grills must be at least 10 feet from the side of a building unless the manufacturer's instructions say it can be closer. Make sure grills are not underneath any overhand hanging branches. Grills cannot be used on a porch, balcony, or deck with a roof, overhang, or wall. Grills can only be used on open for first floor porches, decks, or patios if there's an outdoor stairway to the ground or if the porch is at ground level. Grills cannot be used on fire escapes. Place grills away from the house and deck railings. Keep all matches, lighters, and lighter fluid away from children. Keep children and pets at least three feet away from grills. Children should never play near grills or propane cylinders. Handling propane, keep all propane outdoor. At least 10 feet away from the building openings such as doors, windows, and dryer vents, and 20 feet away from any air tank vents and any ignition sources. Do not smoke while handling a propane cylinder. Store propane cylinders upright in an outdoor shaded area. Do not leave cylinders in a vehicle. Cylinders should not be used, stored, or transported where they can be exposed to high temperatures. Let's talk a little more about charcoal grill safety. Use only charcoal starter fluid. Gasoline and kerosene should not be used to start a fire in a grill. Never add lighter fluid to burning briquettes or hot coals. Doing so may cause a flash fire and result in serious burn injuries. Charcoal briquettes give off carbon monoxide, a colorless, odorless gas that can be deadly. Always use charcoal grills in a well-ventilated area. Never use charcoal grills indoors. For proper disposal of grill ashes, allow the coals to burn out completely and then soak them with water. Cool them for 48 hours before disposal. Do not place them in a trash bag in or near your house. If you must dispose of ashes before they are completely cooled, thoroughly soak them in water before putting them in a metal container. Let's talk about gasoline safety. A lot of us travel in the summertime, whether we're camping outdoors, whether we're mowing our grass, or we're using something else that uses gasoline. Let's keep these points in mind that we're gonna talk about. Store gas containers in a secure place, away from living areas. Use a locked shed or detached garage. Keep gas away from any ignition source, such as a pilot light. Keep gasoline away from heat, sparks, or a flame. A spark or a lit cigarette is enough to light gas fumes that linger on clothing. Keep gasoline away from children. Children aged 10 to 14 are more likely to get in trouble with gasoline and suffer burns. If your clothes catch on fire, remember to stop, drop, and roll. Turn off your car when you get gas. Don't leave it on, fueling unattended. Don't wait in the car. Don't stick the gas cap into the nozzle at self stations. Remember to put the nozzle back in your gas cap on before leaving. To refill an approved gas container, put it on the ground. Next, insert the pump nozzle and bring it in contact with the inside of the container. This reduces the risk of static electricity igniting the vapors. Now let's talk about oily rag disposal. Maybe you're working in your garage on a project or in your home this summer. Know how to properly dispose of your oily rags. Oily rags are a source of fire because people don't know that they can spontaneously combust. Dispose of rags safely in two steps. Hang them outside to dry in a safe area or spread them out flat, making sure they are weighted down. They should not be in a pile. Once they are dry, for those who use oily rags daily or weekly, place the dry rags in a listed oily waste container to be emptied by a private contractor. For less frequent users, store oily rags in a small, airtight, non-combustible, 
such as a metal container with a tight fitting lid. An oil paint can is a good example. Cover the rags completely with a solution of water and an oil breakdown detergent. Do not add any combustible material. Dispose of the container during a hazardous waste collection event. Now let's talk about hotel or motel safety. If you're traveling this summer, checking into a hotel or motel, make sure you think about fire safety. Consider fire safety when checking into a motel or a hotel. Count the number of doors down the hall to the nearest fire exit. Never use elevators in a fire. If you are deaf or hard of hearing, ask for a hearing impaired kit from the front desk that has a strobe smoke alarm. Keep your room key, eyeglasses, and a flashlight on the night table. If a fire occurs, take them with you to the door. Once you get to the door, feel it. If it feels cool, open it a crack. Be ready to close the door if hot air, flames, or smoke rush into the room. If this does not occur, but the hallway is smoke-filled, crawl down the hall, counting the doors to the nearest exit. If you cannot reach the exit, turn around and count the doors back to your room. Unlock the door and re-enter. If it's unsafe to leave your room, fill the tub with cold water. Stuff wet towels around the door to keep the smoke out. If possible, open a window and hang a sheet outside to signal for help. Cover your face with a wet cloth and stay low if smoke gets in the room. Do not jump. Call 911 to tell them where you are. And speaking of traveling in the summer, sometimes driving in hot weather can cause your car to overheat. When your car overheats, always turn off your car and wait at least one half an hour before attempting to open the radiator. Use a heavy rag or cloth to open that radiator. Stand back as far as possible. Keep your face out of the way in case the radiator should rupture. Now that the 4th of July is come and gone, let's still talk about fireworks. And here's an important point. Leave fireworks to the professionals. Fireworks in Massachusetts are illegal. Sparklers are included in that as well, and they are illegal. A lot of times sparklers can heat up so high to 1,200 degrees possibly, and if we come in contact with that sparkler, it can either start our clothes on fire or it could cause a burn. If you should become burnt or if something happens in the summertime, remember your, your basic first aid. Let's talk a little about first aid and dehydration. Cooler burn. For minor burns, run cool water over the burn immediately. Do not use ice. Seek emergency medical help immediately for more serious burns. Call 911. Use sunscreen to avoid sunburns. Also remember to stay hydrated in the summertime. Being dehydrated could cause you to faint or at least feel faint. That's it for this episode of Hot Topics. I'm Captain David DeMarco. Please have a great summer and stay safe.